Today we are doing things a bit differently with the audio. Instead of using the lapel microphone that clips to my shirt, I bought a uh, Rode microphone that mounts right to the top of the camera, so uh, the audio might sound a little bit different. There might be a little bit of echo in there just because of the uh, audio dynamics in the room. Uh, and if you guys don't like this approach, please leave a uh, comment in the comment section. I'm only going to be recording like this for like a minute or two, and I'm going to switch over to the uh, uh, other microphone back there, and the audio will be back to normal. Um, so just let me know what you guys think. But anyway, today we're going to be reviewing this Access 3 from Azul. Now, if you guys don't remember, in my last mini PC review, I think that was also an Azul uh, mini PC. But anyway, I said I was getting bored of reviewing these mini PCs because it was the same darn thing over and over and over over again. You know, you just take a Cherry Trail Atom processor, toss in 4 gigabytes of like DDR3 RAM, throw 32 gigabytes of EMMC storage on top of that, and you got yourself a decent little mini PC. Well, today we have something a little bit different. This is the Axis 3 right here, and you guys might notice that it looks like every other, you know, uh, stick format mini PC. This just plugs into the back of your uh, TV or into the side of your TV via HDMI, depending on uh, where the HDMI port is on the TV. Uh, but it just plugs right in, you take your uh, micro USB power supply right here, plug that in, and you're good to go. Boots up and uh, you can plug in a wireless keyboard and mouse uh, and just use it as a, you know, nice little compact media PC. Now while these mini PCs do look for the most part the same on the outside, on the inside, we finally got a hardware refresh, a much needed hardware refresh. So inside this mini PC, we have a uh, Gemini Lake Intel Celeron 4100 processor, four cores at 1.1 gigahertz with a boost speed of 2.4 gigahertz, I believe. Yep, that is correct. That's paired with four gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now, you're still working with 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage with these media PCs, uh, and unfortunately, this one only came with 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage and with Windows 10 you do tend to run into a space crunch especially after Windows 10 does all of its updates and everything but the good thing is it does have a two USB 3.0 ports so if you want to put some games or something like that or media on an external drive you have the IO to connect it to plenty of fast storage. Uh, speaking of IO this thing's also equipped with a full-size Ethernet port on the back. I mean, check that out. They did have to raise the case a little bit. Of course, equipped with Wi-Fi, micro SD card slot right there. And I've already talked about the uh, full-size HDMI port on the front. Oh, one more thing. There is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the back along with a uh, lock slot. So enough rambling now. Let's get down to business, run some benchmarks, play some games and see what this media PC can do. Starting off with the benchmarks, things actually looked pretty bleak for this little PC. Firestrike was a slideshow, and the results from Passmark and 3 Mark were pretty low, but not really too surprising. Things looked a lot better when it came to running actual games. Left 4 Dead 2 ran at 20 frames per second at 1080p with everything turned to high. Bumping the resolution down to 720p allowed the game to run at a more playable 25 to 30 frames per second. Portal was playable when set to 1080p at high settings, and Minecraft also ran at a playable 30 frames per second with a few of the settings and view distance turned down. Many of the mini PCs I have reviewed in the past flaunted 4K display capabilities as one of their main selling points. However, if you try to actually stream 4K media on those older generation media PCs, they would all fall flat. The Axis 3, with its integrated Intel 600 graphics, actually does an okay job of playing back 4K video. While attempting to play back a 4K YouTube video through my uh, Dell 2715Q, I noticed that there were points in the video where it would stutter a little bit, but for the most part, it was watchable. If you are planning to use this media stick with a 4K display, one thing to keep in mind is that the Axis 3 is only equipped with HDMI 1.4, meaning you will be limited to 4K at 30Hz. The Access 3 makes a snappy daily driver. Applications open in an instant thanks to its reasonably fast eMMC storage, and its 4GB of LPDDR4 RAM leaves enough headroom to open several applications at the same time. I would not recommend buying the 32GB version of this PC stick. As I said earlier, after a few updates, only a few gigabytes of free storage remained. If you plan on actually using the internal storage, go for nothing less than the 64GB variant. I fired up Prime95 to see how the CPU clock speed would react under load, and as you can see we are sitting at 1.68 GHz right now. The CPU started off at 2 GHz, and then after a couple minutes it down clocked to that. Moving over to the back, the case is actually uh, pretty toasty. That uh, outer heatsink design is doing its job, but 
it's definitely getting warm to the touch. We're sitting at 132 degrees Fahrenheit at the hottest point in the case. And then that would be uh, 53 degrees Celsius. So I wanted to see if I could get the Access 3 to run off the USB ports on the back of my monitor because a lot of smart TVs these days have built-in USB ports and it would be really convenient just to plug uh, the Access 3 into one of those USB ports instead of having to deal um, with that clunky uh, power brick. So what I did was I tested it with my Dell 4K monitor. Uh, I believe these USB 2.0 or these USB ports are pretty much in line with USB 2.0 spec as far as power output is concerned. So you limited to 500 milliamps there. Uh, and yeah, the computer won't even boot. So most smart TVs are also uh, within that spec as well. Their USB ports are usually limited to around uh, USB 2.0 specs. So uh, you will most likely need the power brick in order to run this thing. And uh, curiosity, I did run a quick power draw test using Prime95 at its max. The computer pulled a total of 10 watts. Now it's funny because you can actually see when the clock speed of the processor drops because the power consumption also drops. So uh, when the processor down clocked, it went from 10 watts to eight watts of power consumption. While we are on the subject of power, let me just complain about the power adapter. Now this device is designed so that you plug it into the back of your TV. Yeah, that's all fine and Andy, but as I said earlier, you can't use the USB ports on your TV. You have to use the power adapter and the cable for the power adapter is way too short. It's only four feet long. I don't know about you, but none of the TVs in my house have an outlet that's only four feet away. Like they're all at least eight feet away. So if you buy this little uh, PC stick, you're probably gonna have to buy an extension cord. That's gonna be about it for this video. Overall, I didn't really have any problems with this media PC. Now it does run on the hot side for sure, but that is expected with a computer of this form factor. So if you're in the market for a very compact, capable uh, mini PC with newer hardware, then this is definitely worth a look. Now, unfortunately, there's only like two places I can find this for sale right now. It's not for sale on Amazon and it's out of stock on the Azul site. So if you want to check this thing out, you're going to have to go to Best Buy's website and it's currently on sale on Best Buy's site for $179. Now there's two more things I want to mention before this video ends. Um, and these are kind of just random things I thought I should when you know you guys might find interesting um but the wi-fi on this thing is actually very good so i was about 20 feet away the max download speed for my home's internet is 100 megabits per second and i was pretty much maxing that out when i was uh, trying to download games through steam so very happy with the wi-fi's performance and uh the other thing i want to mention is that it does come with a tiny little I think it's about three inch HDMI extension cables. So if the PC doesn't quite fit into the space where your TV's HDMI port is, um, then you can plug that cable in and that acts as an extension to bring the PC a little bit further away from your HDMI port so you can plug it in. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, don't forget to drop a like. If you didn't like it, please let me know why and I will see you guys in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.